My name! Yeah, what do you want to know? Well, I want to tell you acquire birth name. Um, how do we acquire names? There are many different ways. Um, many, many years ago, I, I, I took sannyas in India. Uh, I was given a name that um, I had the choice to use or not, and I decided to try it on, not necessarily for spiritual reasons, nor to uh, add another identity to myself or even change my identity, but actually to strip myself away of the conditioning around the name. You know, we get conditioned with our names, it has a frequency, it has a vibration, it has memories, and we become identified with it and in many different ways and, and for me that was something that I wanted to inquire into so I took on board a different name, a name that I wasn't comfortable with and that wasn't from my culture and uh, either birth culture or the culture that I live in in England and uh, I worked with it for a while and it stuck and I wrote my first book um, in 2000 and the name was used for that and then as it came to the time, everyone knew me as that new name, and as the, but I kept my surname, and as the time came to writing the book that was previous to this, How to Find God in Everything, in 2008, I had to make a decision, because signatures, you know, legalities, and I just took on board the name, and it felt right. There's a, a great liberation that happens when we stop looking outside of ourselves for that which we think will make us feel better about ourselves. So whether that looking outside of ourselves is for more happiness or more freedom or more peace or more money or more security or more qualifications or more love or more recognition. When we look outside of ourselves, we move away from ourselves. And so my book is really talking about the turnaround from seeking that which we think will make our lives fuller or better to seeking within. In fact, not even seeking, but resting within. Yeah, so I talk about a 360 degree revolution in consciousness. Now why 360 degrees rather than 180 degrees? Well, 180 degrees means that you're simply on the same plane, on the same dimension, but just looking the other way. That essentially doesn't change anything. The 360 degrees is actually a complete revolution, a turnaround in the way that we see things that has a lift to it. So essentially we're being lifted out of the egoic dimension which only sees past and future. In other words, it's running away from what scares it and running towards what gratifies it. In the turnaround we enter a vertical dimension in which we are lifted out of small-minded egoic self into the eternal now, a vertical dimension in which we are resting deeply relaxed in the ground of being. It's the only true liberation. It's the only true freedom. And everything that we think we need and want is found within this place. All the love, all the recognition, all the worth, all the resources, all the support, all the nourishment, all the peace. Everything is here within us. So we come to rest in our true power. We come to reclaim our sovereignty. In other words, we sit in right being. Yeah, it's like we claim our throne. We sit on the throne of our own kingdom. Yeah? And it's from this place that we can create a real revolution, not only within our own lives, but also in the world. And the 10 spiritual lessons 
are qualities of being that emerge through our lives into becoming, yeah? Because we are both being and becoming. Being is the ground, the foundation of who we are, the recognition of our true awakened, if you like, enlightened state, which is simply the capacity to be fully present and to meet what is here with naked openness. As we move through the world, through what we do and our actions and our relationships and our interactions, then these qualities of being emerge through our becoming. We become more of ourselves. We evolve. We relate. And through that relationship, the world also evolves. So these 10 spiritual lessons, they facilitate or activate, if you like, the qualities of being that emerge into the world. And th they actually arose out of um, a vision that I received, a mystical experience many, many years ago, where I asked from a deep soul place, what is the answer to suffering? What is the way through suffering? Having been a spiritual seeker for many, many years myself up until that point, and I'd actually dropped the search, and I'd found a place of, of, of um, at oneness with what was unfolding in my life, and yet there was still this core question uh, which arose out of a, 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 the core wound of separation that was still operating in my life, and it was becoming untenable. So I asked, this question arose from me, it didn't arise from my mind, but it arose from my deep, deepest part, and what is the way through suffering? And I didn't expect an answer, but the answer I received was a mystical experience in which I experienced tangibly and viscerally and visually and in an auditory way, as if I was really in the journey of it. I experienced two things. I experienced um, a, a radical transformation of consciousness in which I, I inhabited the power of my beingness. I experienced my I am presence. Not just in a meditation practice where we touch on that, but as a very uh, a tangible and unfolding uh, reality of my everyday life. It continued. And I also experienced um, the vast, unbounded compassion of an open heart. Yeah? The, 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 the feeling was that the, the river of human suffering was being fed by the milk of human kindness. So there were these two side-by-side -side experiences, if you like, of the true, uh, of, of, of my core nature. And out of that was born something new. What was born was a new consciousness, the birth of Christ consciousness, the birth of the golden child, the divine spark, call it what you will. The words always um, bring certain concepts to mind, so I try not to use these words, yeah, because it's far beyond the words that we use. Um, and the birth was also the birth of a new world. Yeah? A new world that is created or built out of the recognition of who we truly are. The ten lessons were, I stood back, if you like, and looked at this vision, not only as to how it related to my own life, but how it related to the bigger picture, because it had a collective story to it, if you like, a collective message, it wasn't just for my own benefit. I stood back and looked at what are the essential teachings within it, what are the essential lessons within it, what, are the, what is the practical application of this? And what emerged were ten lessons which, when we activate them, when we use them, when we apply them to our everyday life, become like an exercising of a muscle. 
In other words, the exercising of a spiritual muscle or a consciousness muscle. And we need to apply them over and over again. And as we do this, they strengthen and, um, if you like, polish the facets of our inner jewel, the jewel of our awakened radiant nature, which is here anyway, but it gets clouded over by personal conditioning, social conditioning, cultural conditioning, genetic conditioning, ancestral conditioning. The roots are very, very deep, and that conditioning is always here. It always plays itself out in some way. But when we recognize the truth of who we are, and we activate these ten powers or ten qualities of being, that diamond, that jewel starts to shine more brightly. And in shining more brightly, right action arises out of right being. In other words, what we do, what we say, what we think, and what we feel become congruent or in alignment with the truth of our awakened essential nature with the fragrance of who we are. And in that congruency, in that alignment, not only do our own lives uh, change in the sense of our motivation moves from egoic self-gratification self to being of service. Yeah? Not being of service in terms of just doing good in the world, because very often that comes from a dysfunctional place but simply the recognition that we are here to serve the bigger picture and there is no greater fulfillment and no greater nourishment and no greater glory, if you like, than this service. And that service will take many different forms and many different shapes for each individual, you know, for different individuals. There's not just one way of doing that. Yeah? When this shift in motivation happens, then all our thoughts and feelings and actions and relationships and how we relate to the world, how we see the world, how we experience the world, and then our actions are based on that perception and that experience, radically change. And so if each individual has the capacity to make this transformation and to ground themselves and to anchor themselves within this inner light, this jewel, this radiance, then a collective frequency can happen where the, the, the world that we are experiencing, our collective reality, has the potential to change. So that's why it's called Change Your Life, Change Your World. And I'm talking about an inner revolution, an inner revolution that can, has the capacity to create a real revolution. The only revolution that's needed in this world is a total spiritual revolution where everything radically changes based on this one pin, if you like, the pin of awakening to the truth of who we are and to keep on being anchored in that because it's not enough just to awaken. Many people are awakening and there are many spiritual experiences and there are many glimpses of enlightenment through many different ways, very many different methods and tools, but that's not enough then to ground ourselves within that requires a conscious action. It requires an activation of our will, of a spiritual will, not an egoic will. Because the world and the way that we relate to it, because of our, the veils of our conditioning, will always pull us towards the habitual momentum of egoic self. And it's not that we obliterate the ego, it's not that we kill the ego, but we transmute it through this process, if you want to call it a process, through this harnessing, through this activation. There is a transmutation of ego to what I call an aware ego. In other words, an ego that is in service to the bigger picture rather than in service to itself, which just simply goes round in circles and creates the suffering that we experience as individuals and collectively. Yeah. So it's a huge change that is to our own benefit and to the benefit of our world and our planet for us to really harness that. So my book is really an invitation to that. Um, the, the lessons, uh, it's essentially a spiritual workbook and but the lessons in it, if you 
if you want to call them that, are not just written things that you just do by rote and then put the book away. They really are an invitation to take each lesson and very specifically to then go about your day for a week really applying that lesson in the way that is suggested to every interaction that you have and to maintain awareness around that and self-reflection and self-inquiry around that in an authentic and honest way and each lesson builds on the next one to actually create a real tangible change or shift in consciousness. That a lot of people have to be involved in this spiritual awakening in order to make a difference of the world. Because the world as we know it just now is sad. Yes, indeed. So, and, and, and how, how are people going to become aware that this is what they have to work on One themselves? needs to be concerned only with oneself. Okay. Yeah. okay. I know that sounds okay. selfish, but ultimately it's the selfless selfishness. Okay. We need to be concerned with ourselves. As soon as we look outside to the world and say, well, it's not going to wake up in time mm -hmm. or it's so much wrong. It's, what are we going to do and it's terrible and this. yeah all of that is true it's an observation of what is happening but we are doing what I said at the beginning which is looking outside of ourselves to fix the problem and the greatest service and the greatest selfless act you can make is actually to create this awakening or to have the willingness to awaken yourself one person one person one person, right. one person, we're like light bulbs. And it's an amazing thing that happens with light bulbs. It's like the lighthouse on the ocean in the dark mm -hmm. of the night and the storm. One little that light can, make a can bring yeah. the ships home. Yeah. And I was talking about this in one of my groups last night. Um, one percent. I don't know if that's a mathematical statistical truth, but it came to me as I contemplated deeply, uh, as a metaphor, let's say, 1% is all it takes to create a quantum leap. That 1% of awareness in you, mm -hmm. when everything is stormy inside of you, is enough to create a quantum leap in consciousness. 1% as a collective is enough to create, yeah? Now, I don't know if that's true, but we can work with that because it's more possible than <laughs> worrying about the 99%. <laughs> Uh, well, you were talking about uh, will, yes. uh, spiritual will, uh, as uh, uh, which is different from from the more personal will. Yes. Maybe uh, can you give some advice or elaborate a little about you know how to activate that spiritual will and how to uh, distinguish spiritual will from the more personal will because you know, uh, yeah. Because, ultimately, because, yeah, ultimately yes. they become one and the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah your personal will will become driven by, let's call it, divine will. That's when the ego, the egoic self, the part that, that, that is the, the observer and the awareness and also the one that takes action, that chooses which action to take, is in service to the bigger picture. When that happens, they become aligned, so you trust that your personal will the, the impulse that comes through you is actually aligned to the greater picture. There isn't a separation. But initially, the way to distinguish, and there are many ways, and this would take some exploration and some self-inquiry, but that's essentially what this is about. The lessons, the actual 10 lessons, will help you differentiate that. But just in a nutshell, to give you a flavor of it, self-gratification. When there is a motivation, you have to question yourself, what the motive, why am I doing this? Is it to make myself feel better about myself? Yeah, and I'm not talking about stepping into the magnificence of your true power and offering it to that to the world, I'm talking about, am I staying in my comfort zone? Am I trying to amass more, whatever it is, more love or more recognition or more qualifications or more food or more this?